Hi everybody and welcome to this video which recaps sleep theories as part of the psychological health and well-being topic for stage 2 psychology. So this video goes through the main sleep theories that are researched and promoted as part of sleep research for psychology. So let's get started. So the amount of sleep that we actually need depends solely on our age. So as we can see here, this is from your workbooks, uh, the hours that are in navy blue are the recommended based on the age of a human being. So we can see here that a newborn, so zero to three months, will typically get 14 to 17 hours of sleep per 24 hours, and that's the recommendation. An older infant between 4 and 11 months, 12 to 15 hours. A toddler, 1 to 2 years, 11 to 14 hours a day. Preschool, 3 to 5 years, 10 to 13 hours a day. School age of 6 to 13 years, 9 to 11 hours a day. A teenager from 14 to 17, 8 to 10 hours. A young adult, so 18 to 25, 7 to 9 an older adult of 26 to 64, same amount, 7 to 9, and an older adult, 65 plus years, 7 to 8 hours. So we can see here that as we get older, the amount of recommended sleep that we need decreases, but not by a significant amount. What we can also see is that the lighter blue areas uh, of more or less outside of the recommended navy blue may be appropriate, but is obviously not ideal. So yes, it's okay, but it could be better. So we see the minimum amounts here for each age group, and we see the maximum here for each age group. So for example, an adult, uh, they should get up to 10, but it's actually better that they get seven to nine because it may disrupt other circadian rhythms later on. Whereas uh, young teenagers, as we can see, which most of you fall into, or you're between these two brackets here, um, up to 11 hours is okay. 10 hours is obviously ideal for 14 to 17. And obviously some of you are turning 18 or you're not, you're not far off. All right. So between seven to nine is obviously ideal and 10 to 11 may be appropriate. So these are the recommendations from the National Sleep Foundation that has been founded by many, many years of research as to what is recommended. So some of you may be looking at this going, okay, I get, you know, about six or seven hours sleep. And yes, that's the minimum amount, but it's recommended that you get between eight to 10, ideally 10. That's why I always nag you and go smack bang in the middle to get nine hours sleep. Okay, so now let's look at some of the main theories as to why we need sleep. One of the most common questions in psychology that I get and that researchers get in this area is why do we actually need it? Why is it so important? So there's several theories as to why this is the case. So the first theory is the repair and restoration theory. So sleep repairs and restores basic bodily functions and strengthens our immune systems. So substantial cell repair and protein synthesis occurs during sleep. So what this means is that when we get uh, the correct amount of hours sleep, it gives our immune system a chance to rebuild itself and go through substantial cell repair. This is often also the reason why when we are sick, all we want to do is sleep, even if we're not typically characteristic of sleeping during the day. When we are sick, that's all we want to do during the day because our body needs the sleep in order for our immune system to strengthen and repair itself and get rid of the cold or the bug that's obviously infecting us at that moment. So if we don't get enough sleep consistent, consistently, we are also more prone to developing or catching bugs uh, that are out there um, in the air. So if we don't get enough sleep consistently, we're more likely to get sick because we're not giving our immune systems enough time or enough of a chance to actually repair itself each night. So if you don't want to get sick or you want to reduce the likelihood of getting sick or reduce the effects of getting sick, getting consistent hours of sleep recommended for your age, if I just go back, is very, very important. So yes, you still may catch the cold or you know a flu or something like that, but often the effects aren't as bad and it won't be as long lasting. So getting enough sleep can strengthen their immune system that we're not as prone to getting sick, or if we do get sick, it doesn't last as long. So research from several universities and technology, uh, technology institutions uh, through experiments with mice show that signals in the brain that modulate the sleep-wake state also act as a switch that turns the immune system off and on. So obviously what this means is that in mice through research through universities, the sleep-wake cycle also acts as a switch that turns the immune system off and on. So when the mice get enough sleep, it turns their immune system on so it can obviously repair itself and then they're not as likely to remain unwell and there is a correlation between that and human beings as well.
So therefore, during periods of sleep, the immune system strengthens, which is why, again, when we are sick, our body needs and wants to sleep when it would not be typical. So there's no point in fighting it when we've got a cold or a flu or a bug. If we need to sleep and we need to rest, it's what we should allow our body to do. Okay, the next theory of sleep is called the cleanup theory. Now, this is similar to the repair and restoration theory that we were just talking about, but there are a few key differences. So research from 2013 show that the brain uses periods of sleep to flush waste and toxins from the body. So the brain has two functional states. It's obviously awake and then alert or asleep and cleaning up. So this cleanup works like a waste disposal system, clearing out waste products that brain cells uh, generate. So not only are we obviously repairing and strengthening our immune system as per the repair and restoration theory, we're also doing a clean out or a flush out when we are asleep as well. So it works like a filtration system and a waste disposal system, clearing out waste products from our brain uh, and sleep obviously allows that process to happen. Also, it reduces and flushes waste from and toxins from our muscles. So often when we don't get enough sleep, we wake up feeling very achy and very sensitive to things like heat or cold or our skin feels more sensitive or we've got aching limbs and things like that. That is because we haven't allowed our bodies and brains enough time in order to flush the waste out and the toxins out from our system. So again, if we're sleep deprived, that's why we feel achy and just overall very, very flat because the cleanup has not gone ahead as long as it should have. So the 2013 research also suggests that issues with clearing out the brain waste might be a factor in the development of certain brain disorders, such as dementia, Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's. So the research that has been done uh, since then also indicates that there may be a correlation between not getting enough sleep and the increased risk of developing brain disorders such as dementia, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's disease. There is more research that needs to go into this, but there is a direct link there. Uh, but more research is needed, but it obviously is an area of sleep and development that is ongoing and quite concerning. Then there is the evolutionary theory of sleep. So this theory suggests or hypothesizes that one reason for sleep is to conserve energy with periods of inactivity. So it actually takes quite a lot of energy for us to get through the day in terms of getting up, going to school, you know, getting through a school day, going to work, going to training, coming home, having a social life, etc. It actually takes up quite a lot of energy. So another theory in its more simple form is that we need sleep in order to conserve energy just simply because we need that energy just to get through a day. So all animals, including humans, have adapted over time to sleep during periods of time when uh, being awake is dangerous. So humans are most productive during the day and are able to rest at night. So in prehistoric times, it was harder to get food. All right, so going way back to caveman days. So by sleeping for some of the day, so having a nap in the middle of the day, humans could conserve energy and keep themselves safe and not be as prone to getting targeted by predators. So that's why it's thought that in the afternoon, we often have that lull where we lose our level of awareness a little bit. So in lessons five and six mainly, so in, you know, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., we often feel very, very sleepy. It's thought that links back to this theory here of uh, the evolutionary theory in prehistoric times, it was harder to get food. So we would sleep instead or humans would sleep instead to conserve some energy. So they would then go out and forage and hunt later in the day when it was safer and when we had more energy. So that feeling of sleepiness that often we all feel uh, at that time of day it's between 2 and 4 p.m. is linked back to this theory here. Now, predatory animals such as lions and bears can sleep 12 to 15 hours a day because there is just a lack of threat to them, whereas other animals with many predators and they are the prey can only sleep in short bursts because obviously it depends on it for their survival. So that's why lions and bears who don't have a predator um, can sleep for as long as they can because there's no threat to their life or it's very unlikely. Whereas other animals with many predators can only sleep in short bursts, otherwise they may get killed or die uh, by their predators. So as we can see here, all right, this is the average daily sleep totals for different mammals and animals. I know that's cut off at the bottom, but what it says is large animals such as elephants need to consume a lot of calories in order to obtain the energy that they need to live, whereas small animals like bats and possums need fewer waking hours to survive. 
So again, these animals over time, over evolution, have adapted to the amount of sleep that they need to ensure their survival. So let's go through this. So a giraffe on average 1.9 hours a day, an elephant 3.5 hours a day, human obviously eight hours, that's human adult, chimpanzee 9.7, uh, 10.4 hours for a dolphin, 11.4 hours for a rabbit, a gerbil, 13.1, 15.8 hours for a tiger, and for a brown bat, 19.9 hours. So the last theory is the information consolidation theory. So this is quite important and one of the main theories that's uh, being very heavily researched, especially recently. So we know that REM sleep plays a vital role in memory retention and consolidation and the removal of unwanted information and storage of important data from memory. So I like to think of memory or compare it to like a filing cabinet. So when we get enough sleep, it means that we're obviously getting enough REM sleep because we know that REM sleep is at the end of a sleep cycle. So that typically means we are completing our sleep cycles as we should. So by getting enough REM sleep, what it does is it files our memories away in our filing cabinet, which is our memory, in an organized fashion so we can recall them later. So by getting enough sleep, it organizes our memory filing cabinet that we can easily recall the files. It puts them in the correct order, in alphabetical order, labels them, and so it's all organized. And if we need those files or memories later, it's easy to recall them. So sleep ensures the consolidation and sorting of important information into short and long-term memory. And this process also takes place during slow wave sleep. So that's often why as well, if we don't get enough slow wave sleep, our memory is badly affected, especially in the short term. So several researchers have concluded that a lack of sleep has a serious impact on the ability to recall and remember information. So that's obviously very, very relevant to you guys because being in year 12, and gumming up to exams and so on, sleep is vital for you to remember and recall information later, which is why I nag you all the time about getting enough sleep and obviously for your own well-being as well. So I hope you found that video useful. Those are the main sleep theories as part of this course and as part of stage two psychology. As always, any questions, let me know.